Hey guys, Mike here. Thanks for tuning in. So in this video, what I'm going to talk about is eight the eight things I do before we get to this point right here, before we start pouring the concrete. So I'm going to give you kind of like my eight tips on the, some of the things you should be thinking about if you're going to get ready to pour a garage floor, a house floor, a slab, or any type of concrete really. So the first thing is you're going to want to order your concrete in advance. So what we're finding out is if we don't have concrete on the books already, it's usually a two week wait time before we can get our concrete. So if you've got a pour coming up and, and you know you're going to be ready on a certain date, you want to call at least two weeks in advance. Even more would be better. And that way you're going to get your concrete hopefully pretty close to the date you want to pour your, your slab or your floor. And then another thing is as as the if you get a date you know and you're going to want to pour first thing in the morning i would ask them you know hey number one can i pour on this date and if i can can i get it first thing in the morning like 7 a.m and the dispatcher might say yes or no and if he says no i can't get it to your first round maybe i can get it to your second round that's generally going to be you know 9 10 a.m in the morning second round so you'll have to decide whether or not you want to pour that late, I typically we don't we don't typically like to. Um, we like pouring first thing in the morning, and then you know that gives us all day to finish. Depending on what the weather is, what the temps are, and all that, it's just we, we find it so much better to pour at 7 a.m. So you'll have to decide on that. And then once you do get your date, as that date gets closer, you're going to want to keep checking the weather on that date. If you see they're calling for rain then you're going to want to reschedule. You're not going to want to take a chance pouring outside like we are right here. If there's any type of rain or even showers or a chance of rain, just one five minute downpour could really ruin the surface of the concrete and then you'll be wishing, you know, you'd be wishing you'd canceled and waited for another day after that. So that's, that's number two, check the weather as the date gets closer. Uh, actually, number three, pouring first thing in the morning was number two. So the fourth thing we I always do is I always tell them what I want for a mixed design. Now, when we pour a floor like this, our mixed design is 3,500 PSI, three-quarter inch stone, fiber mesh for reinforcement. Uh, we always use a mid-range water reducer so we can pour a fairly loose slump like this one, a six, six and a half slump. And then... We always have uh, air entrainment too on the garages we pour. We put air entrainment in because these garages may not be heated. They may still go through some freeze and thaw cycles. And then any exterior concrete we do, patios, walkways, pool decks, driveways, whatever, are always air entrained. So about five to six percent air. And that just helps with uh, the freeze and thaw when rain when it rains or snow or ice melts on the concrete, it gets absorbed into the concrete and then those de-icing chemicals wear off and that water refreezes inside the concrete. The air entrainment is going to help that concrete from popping and it's just a little bit of uh, insurance against having some damage to your concrete. Another thing I like to tell the dispatcher is what slump I'm pouring the concrete at. Like on this one, I'll tell them, you know, hey, I want the mid-range. We're probably pouring around a six. That way, at right after he batches the truck out, usually the driver pulls ahead, uh, washes his truck down, rinses his truck down. He tells the dispatcher what he's got for a slump in the drum before he even takes off to the job. So if you're pouring something where you need a pretty stiff slump, like maybe a set of stairs or something with a lot of pitch or a lot of slope to it, you might need a, a four inch slump. Uh, the dispatcher is going to want to know that because if he batches the truck out too wet, then you might send it back and, and he doesn't want that, that's for sure. So make sure you tell him the slump you're pouring him at. And then the other thing is, you know, give good direction, especially if you're out in rural areas or out in the country like we are a lot. You know, make sure you've got a street address. Give them something to go by. Uh, most of these guys now use GPSs, so they can find you if they've got a good street address. And then if it's a long driveway, you know, have uh, and they can't see you from the road, have like a cone out there, like an orange cone or a, a bucket or something out there. Give them something, a landmine to go by so they know, you know, they're at the right place. And then the other thing is make sure that, 
they know if they need to drive in or back in. If there are rear dumps like this, and they've got a long driveway to go to, but there's no place to turn around when they get to the site, you know, they're gonna have to back in in order to, for you to get your access like, like we have right here. So can they drive in and turn around somewhere if they have a rear dump, or do they need to back in? Now, if you have a front dump, that's, that's pretty much a different story. They're always gonna drive in for, in most cases. And then the eighth thing is, you know, you got to ask the dispatcher, what, what's this going to cost? You know, what's, what, what's the total cost going to be? How am I going to pay you? Do you want a check when the truck driver shows up? Do you take a credit card? Will you send me a bill? You know, how are we going to pay for this stuff down the road? And then actually a bonus tip is make sure you have a place for the concrete truck driver to wash out afterwards too. He's got a, he doesn't have to empty his drum. If he's got concrete in his drum, he can bring that back and they'll either put that in a pit or they'll fill something a block with it or something but he's got to be able to rinse all his chutes on site um, and you may or may not like on a site like this that's pretty easy they'll just be like a little maybe a five gallon bucket full after he gets done rinsing but if you're in the city or something like that you know you got to make sure that he's not going to rinse out on somebody's lawn you got to have something for him to rinse out in so those are those are pretty much the eight or nine things that i uh make sure that we have in check before we get to a job like this so order your concrete in advance number one make sure you keep checking the weather number two ask if you can pour first thing in the morning number three know what mix design you're going to use and if you're going to need air entrainment if you don't live in a freeze thaw area then you probably don't need air entrainment probably half the country lives in a freeze thaw area though or maybe a little more than half uh, tell them the slump you're going to be using give really good directions so the truck drivers don't get lost they want to be able to make it right there without having to search for you and you're less likely maybe to have a hot load that way if he gets lost and he can't find you for a half hour or an hour make sure he knows the driver knows one way or another if he needs to back in or drive in and then you got to know want to know what the cost is and then have a place for them to to wash out so that's pretty straightforward as far as we go because we pour concrete every single day um, and I tell them just whatever they need to know it's just going to benefit us in the long run if these guys know just what they're doing where they're going how fast they're going to be on the job how long they're going to be on the job sometimes I'll even tell them that you know hey this is going to be a really fast dump we'll get them a dumped out and get them right back to you or Maybe if we have to wheelbarrow it, I might say, hey, you know, we got to wheelbarrow this one. He's going to be on the job site a little bit longer than normal. So he can plan for, you know, the dispatcher can plan for his second round of trucks in, in you know, the rest of the day too. So anyway, let me know what you think of that. If you have any other tips, you can leave for people in the comments. You know, leave those tips. We can talk about them in there. If you like the garage floor we're pouring here, just a basic, pretty basic garage floor with a two inch slope from back to front. Uh, we'll end up tapering those doorways down so when the garage door sits down, it sits on that taper. We'll power trial this, we'll saw it today and that'll be it. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you on the next one.